Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today I wanna to talk about soap. I know soap has been a big topic as of late. Everyone's saying, wash your hands. Now, besides the cleanliness part to it, how does washing your hands actually affect this virus? Why do we wash our hands? Why does you know soap kill the virus? Uh, so I want to show that today, and I want to use my microscope to go over this. And, of course, I'm not going to be using the virus. I'm going to be using my own cheek cells. If you saw my last video using the microscope, we looked at my cheek cells, and now I'm going to use the same techniques today to look at them, but in terms of soap. So here I prepared a little slide. Um, I didn't, I'm not preparing this one uh, on the video today because I did do the same thing last microscope video. So just check back. I'll link it here and you can watch that if you want. But these are my cheek cells, also known as buccal cells. You know, pretty simple to do. I just took a toothpick, rubbed it in a spot of water, add a drop of a stain called methyl blue, which stains negative things like our DNA. So we can see our DNA, we can see the outlines of our membranes and so forth. Uh, so on one, on the one on the left here, what I did was I added a drop of water, swirled my toothpick of buccal cells in it and added a drop of methyl blue, put my cover slip on. The one on the right then, I added the drop of water, added my cheek cells, and then the drop of methyl blue, and then with that, I added a drop of hand soap, grabbed this right from my bathroom. Um, so let's see the difference. But So putting it back on my stage, just so I don't drop anything here. Um, first though, I want to go over soap and our membranes because we have to get an understanding of the basics of chemistry. I'm not going deep, deep into this. I just want to go over a general idea of the basic chemistry of what's going on here. So using my drawing program, I want to draw something known as a phos... I want to... Let's draw it down here. So this is a phospholipid up here this so this is a you know a molecular structure our cells do not hold themselves via a bond a covalent bond that holds all these molecules together don't think of the cells as like the lining on a balloon that's all held together by bonds our cells are very dynamic structures they say you know our cells have the viscosity of our cell membranes have the viscosity of something like uh, salad dressing. So very, very thick and viscous. And it's, they're always moving and very dynamic. And they're made of these molecules called phospholipids. So at the top here is a um, molecule called phosphatidylcholine. Then here we have hydrocarbon tails. The top is what is known as polar. And the tails are non-polar. So the polar head is hydrophilic so the, Philadelphia is a city of brotherly love. Hydrophilic means the polar part is water loving. The nonpolar tails are hydrophobic. So these have a fear or a phobia of water. So now I, our membranes then are a phospholipid bilayer. So if I were to draw our cell membranes, I'm not going to draw the whole thing, just some some of them. So here's the phosphatidylcholine heads, and then over here will be the other side. So looking at the general structure of our cell membrane, this is how it would work. It then continue on that way, that way, and that way until it forms a whole cell, a whole circle. So this is what our cell membrane is. So these heads here are water loving. So we have water outside, and we have water inside. So water outside, water inside. And that's how our cells hold together. If we didn't have water, if we didn't evolve in an aqueous environment with water, our cells would not form like this. Uh, then inside here is hydrophobic, so there is no water. So this is why some lipids, you, know, you, so you rub um, very greasy oils on your skin, they can actually absorb into your skin because of them being lipid-based. So all of our cells have this membrane. Um, and not only do our cells have this membrane, so draw a cell here, it has that membrane. Also the nuclear envelope in the middle has that membrane where then inside you have your genetic material. So it's two phospholipid bilayers in the cell. So right here's a phospholipid bilayer and right here's a phospholipid bilayer. Each of these lines is this structure right here. So now, how does soap 
play a role in this? I forgot an O there, an H2O. Uh, how does soap play a role in this? Well, we can go look at the structure of soap over here. Also, oh, before I do that, this is also known as an amphipathic molecule. So amphipathic, that means it's both polar and nonpolar. That's a very important word to understand because soap is also an amphipathic molecule. Now, I can then now show you a molecule of soap. I'm not gonna draw the molecule of soap, I'm just gonna th show it here using moleview.org. So this is sodium laurate. This is what we commonly find in soap. And what do we see here? So over here, we see this carboxylic acid head. Um, now you don't have to know anything about this, but you, we see that negative charge on oxygen is double bond uh, to this oxygen here. This is what makes it polar. So this is the polar head on soap. And those little tails I drew on all these phospholipids uh, back here in my drawing thing, all these little tails here, those are hydrocarbons. This is what a hydrocarbon is. It's a long chain of carbon surrounded by hydrogens. So right here we have a molecule of soap. This is the polar head and this would be the tail. And I just wanted to show this here to show the molecular structure. Now, the phospholipids in us, some of these have double bonds in them. They add little kinks. We're not gonna get into that here, but this is just a general structure of soap. And the key here is that soap is an amphipathic molecule. So not only does it interact with water, it also interacts with non-polar substances, so substances that are repelled from water. So this makes it able to pull apart your cell membrane. So if we hop back into the drawing program here, and we draw now soap, now it looks like this. It's just one tail. So there's the polar end, and there's the non-polar end. So if we draw a phospholipid membrane here, let's say we draw our virus. So here is our little virus. So drawing some of these. So the virus also has a phospholipid membrane. And then let's draw this going all the way around. And then inside this virus, we have, oops, I meant to choose a different color there. We have the RNA. So there's the genetic material inside the virus. Very, very generic representation. But what this soap does now, so this polar molecule interacts with these polar heads, and this nonpolar part actually pulls these tails out. So this disrupts the cell membrane. So if you disrupt the cell membrane, you actually cause it to lyse. Uh, so this membrane then lyses and then breaks apart. So this is important to understand this. This virus has this phospholipid bilayer. This is also how it gets into our cells. So if we were to draw our little cell membrane right here and it has the ACE2 receptor sticking off, right here is where we'd have, this is, would be the spike protein on the virus interacts with that ACE2 receptor. So this is the S protein. And I talked about this in previous uh, virus videos that attaches, and what happens is this phospholipid actually fuses. So there's the phospholipid bilayer right there. It fuses with this one because think about these. When these come in close contact, these tails want to interact here. So these tails actually pull in here, and then they fuse, become one. This, the virus membrane, actually become our cellular membrane then with the same protein sticking in it, and then the RNA then enters our cell for replication. I went over that whole process in previous videos if you want to go uh, watch those in the previous updates. Uh, but soap here breaks apart the virus, gets out the RNA, and this is an important technique that's even used, though one of the testing strategies used for the virus to see if you have it or not is RT-PCR. The key step in RT-PCR is isolating the RNA from that virus. So you have to break apart this membrane. One way you can do that is a solution containing detergent. And this is also why the Tide Pod challenge is so silly, because you're ingesting a detergent. Not only does this virus have, you know, a cell membrane made of phospholipids, every cell in your body also does. So you're also risking rupturing all your cells. Not only that, these Tide Pods also contain a whole bunch of other chemicals that are bad for you. Uh, but one big problem with the Tide Pods, or detergents in general, if you would ingest soaps, is that they could cause rupturing of your cells because of the soap molecules, the sodium laurate, interacting with your cells. So showing my cheek cells today is a very simple way that we can show this representation using the microscope. So we can do that now. So the key here so far is understanding the chemistry of soap. Soap breaks apart these membranes. So they say you need to wash your hands for 20 minutes. Uh, that's because your hands has all these little cracks and things where this virus can hide. And then not only that, the soap is slippery and you're allowing 
the virus to slip off then. So not all the soap might not rupture the virus. Like when we look today, we might find some cells in my soap sample that are still intact. Uh, it doesn't disrupt every single cell. Um, it takes time. Now this sample has been sitting for probably 30 minutes now for me to prep the video and whatnot. So we might find fewer cells than what we would find in a non-soap sample. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we can still find a lot. Not I'll have to pause the video and remake it. Um, but yes, soap kills the virus by breaking apart the cell membrane. Alcohol does a similar thing as well, but it needs to be over 60% alcohol to do so. Okay, now the part we've all been waiting for. Uh, let's go to the microscope. Okay, so here, again, we looked at my cheek cells before. Um, let's get it in focus here, and let's find a good little clump. So we're going to look at the ones that don't have soap right now. Uh, that looks like a good little clump right there. So right now we're at 40x magnification, but I could still see some of the cells down there. So let's just go into 100x magnification. This is just kind of our control. So our positive control showing the presence of, you know, methyl blue and stained nuclei. So this is 100 times magnification. If we go up one more, now we can get a nice shot of my cells one last time. I know I showed this last video, but it's still always really neat to look at your own cells. Uh, so we see those little uh, stained nuclei in there. So if we go to, if we center this right here, so right here we have these, these are my nuclei stain. That's where all my DNA is being housed. We see these little dark spots out here. Those are most likely mitochondria, which also contain their own genetic material. There could be some bacteria around there as well. If you want to uh, hear my whole lecture on the components of the cell, uh, be sure to watch that last video where I went over the different things we might be looking at here. But the purpose of this one is see how soap works. So this is when soap isn't present. Everything looks great. Um, another thing with methyl blue is that it attaches to things that are negative charged like our DNA. So when we put it with soap, our cells are less likely to be stained. So we're going to actually see less staining when we go over to the other sample. So back to 100 times magnification here. Now let's move over to the soap sample. So right here, this little break is a cover slip separating them. So now we're looking at the soap sample. So here we see very few stained cells. Looks like there might be something right there. Like I said, we might find something. So there, it looks like there might be a cell down there, but it's pretty jagged. It's uh, by itself. And let's zoom in here a little bit, see if we can get a better focus on this. Look, it does not look as clean as the last ones. You see the cell membrane too. Uh, so if we zoom in on the cell membrane here, it's very disruptive. Uh, so this one, you can see that the soap is probably interacting with it. You don't even see a stained nuclei in this one. So suggesting that the soap could have gotten into the cell and broken down the nuclear envelope before it actually broke down the cell, which could happen. So this is 400 times magnification. So now if we go deeper into the sample, we could even see even more of this going on. So here I'm changing the focus. Nothing is coming in. And again, this was prepared exactly the same. Um, I am not seeing anything here. If there's any stains here, uh, it could be, that's just a spot. Yep. So here we're in focus. Not seeing anything. I'm at 100 times magnification. There looks like something that might be clustered together. I don't see any nuclei there, though. So here we can see the effect that soap has. There, there, should, there should be tons of cells stained in here, but nothing, nothing. There's a little blue spot there. So we might see some stain that's been done just from, you know, we released all the DNA from this. And there's, a, there's that little clump we just saw. Again, I'm just moving around here, seeing if we can find anything. And you can see how hard it is to actually find something. Now, it would be really cool to get a video of the actual, like, lysing. Uh, but I'm not fast enough and I don't have the supplies on hand in order to do so. Let's go up to 400 times magnification here just to get this comparison. So here we see a little bit of a cell. I told you not every cell would be disruptive, but this does not look like what we just saw. Um, so this is zooming in here. These would be, you know, possibly cell membranes, most likely cell membranes that have survived. Uh, going back to 100 times magnification now, continuing to look around here. 
Again, you can see the main difference. And, I, and this is neat because we're actually seeing in real time, using a microscope, using my own cells, how soap works. So if I would have ingested this soap or let this soap sit in my mouth, this is what would have happened. I would be breaking apart the cell membranes of all my cells. And that's what's so dangerous about eating a Tide Pod, but also what kills the virus when you wash your hands. So there's a decent clump right there. I think this is the one we saw before. Yeah, very, very broken apart. And that's the key here, how broken apart this is. And now if we go back so right here, we're seeing the interface between the two. So this is the cover slip that separates them. So now some soap via a process called Brownian motion, because typically you, you shouldn't uh, put you know, cover slips this close together on the same slide, but I'm kind of just showing it because uh, I didn't want to change samples in the middle of this video. Uh, so there you see a cell. Right here would be a cell. Then, then over here, so that's the non-soap side, and over here is the soap side. Uh, so you can go up the middle of this and see the difference between the soap versus non-soap side. And now in some of these, the soap might be moving in here. So these cells might be beginning to be disrupted by soap moving in via just simple Brownian motion between the cover slips. Um, now, they can't be positive of that, but it could be happening right here. Now, I don't see stained nuclei in there as well, which could be disrupting the methyl blue. But if I go deeper in to this stained sample, we then uh, get the dark pigments back. And we didn't see any of these in the previous sample. So none of these dark pigments. We're at the same focus, uh, same magnification moving around. So major, major differences between the two. That's just a little water droplet, um, water spot, yeah, air bubble up there. Yeah, getting my language mixed up. But I feel like that's a good demonstration of how this all works. Uh, I hope you got a little under, better understanding of how soap actually is working chemically and how it breaks apart your cell membrane. So using my cells as a guinea pig here, I was able to show this structure of how this phospholipid bilayer can be broken apart using a molecule of soap because soap is an amphipathic molecule, interacts with the inside and outside, and then disrupts it. And that's the key here. We disrupt that membrane, we pull it apart, and you break apart the virus. You get that RNA out, that RNA can just the RNA won't infect you. The virus needs to have that S protein on the outside as well to bring that RNA into your cell for it to replicate. But that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, feel free to write them below. And I hope you all have a great day. And remember to wash your hands out there. It's always a good thing to do anyway, whether is, there is a, a virus going around or not. But like I said, I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. If you have any questions, let me know. And bye-bye.